then once again you're welcome to the game plan show apologies for the break in transmission for our last broadcast due to certain technical hitches which we have you know gladly worked on we are back on our facebook page paul's ghana sports is still fifi anaman on the 49th edition of your favorite sports show on the internet on facebook on twitter on instagram wherever you are we are on the game plan show so tell a friend to tell a friend that we are live on the game plan we'll be discussing a lot of issues today like we always do on the show and we would like you to send in your comments and your suggestions and anything that you want us to broadcast on this show now let me just go over what i was talking about before the initial break i was talking about mubarak Castle and how he has signed for deportivo alaves in the spanish la liga he signed a three-year deal and so he'll be spending his days for the next three years at least at the stadio mendy zorotza which is in um, you know deportivo alaves which is where he'll be playing now this is his ninth club in the last nine years of football for him he's played at so many spanish clubs um, he spent the last six and a half seasons in Spain. In fact, he spent six and a half of his playing time um, in Spain. So he's no stranger to the Spanish terrain as well. So he has joined El Glorioso, which is the nickname of Deportivo Alaves. Of course, Deportivo Alaves were ninth in the La Liga last season. They recently gained promotion in the 2015-16 season, um, which they won the Spanish Segunda Division, which is the second tier of Spanish football. They spent most of their time in the second tier, only 12 seasons in the first tier of Spanish football, the best of which came in 2000 when they placed it. And of course, in 2001, they progressed to the final of the UEFA Cup, losing narrowly to English Giants. <laughs> English Giants Liverpool <laughs> in the final. They lost by five goals to four. So a very decent club. Of course, like I was saying earlier, in June, um, this year, they signed Enzo Zidane, who is the son, the 22-year-old son of the iconic coach and former player of Real Madrid, Real, um, Zinedine Zidane. Yeah, how could I forget his name? Zinedine Zidane, the legendary Zinedine Zidane, has his son also playing at Deportivo Alaves. He signed for an undisclosed fee last month. And just yesterday, Mubarak Wakaso, the 26-year-old Ghanaian, has also joined him there at the club so yes Mubarak Castle three-year deal Deportivo Alaves that is what is happening in this camp of course he was left out of the last Black Star squad that was named for the games against Ethiopia and Afcon 2019 qualifier as well as friendlies in the USA the first one was in Houston on the 28th of June against Mexico and of course the second one on the 1st of July in East Hartford Connecticut against the US themselves so Mubarak Castle all the best to you as you pursue your football. Of course, he started, like I was saying earlier, started playing in Spain at the age of 17. Not new to the Spanish game. Elche, Granada, Villarreal, you know, Las Palmas, and now Deportivo Alaves. So all the best to you, Mubarak Castle, and we hope that you do Ghana proud. And hopefully, you return to the Black Stars full. So what do you think about him? Do you think we still need him in the Black Stars? Especially now that Kwesia Pia is trying a lot of players. Remember, Ebenezer Fori is believed to be the direct, you know, competition for Mubarak Castle, who was dropped on some ground. Now, it was rumored that he said some unsavory things about Kwesia Pia, who ironically gave him his Black Stars debut during the first time he was in charge. Remember, Kwesia Pia was in charge of the Black Stars from April 2012 to September 2014. So, he's not new to the job. Of course, the first time he was in charge, he gave Mubarak Castle his debut. And then now that he has returned... And Mubarak Akaso, um, according to rumors, has grown wings <laughs> and has said some things about the coach that um, he didn't find, um, find very pleasant. And so he dropped him from the squad. This is unconfirmed. And so don't take my word for it. I'm just giving you something from the rumor mill regarding why Mubarak Akaso was dropped from the initial squad. So remember, he came out to deny that he had said anything unsavory about the Black Stars and about the coach. So, so that's it. The main thing we are talking about is how he has signed a three-year deal at Deportivo Alaves in the Spanish La Liga, who will be entering their 13th season in the Spanish Top Flight in the 2016-2017 season. Now let me just go on Facebook and read some of the comments that came in before our break in transmission. I, I saw them, I screenshotted them, and so, and so I'll be reading them for you. I've not forgotten about you, see. I care about you <laughs> here on the game plan. So let me just read a few of them. Gomashi Ibrahimovic Gomez, you are saying 
Alhamdulillah, Fifi, you are doing a wonderful job. Big up watching live from Budu Bram. One love, um, you still do all. Thank you very much. You too, you do all. <laughs> Go, Mashi Ibrahimovic. Um, Eric Menu Neymar, you're saying Neymar live from Dubai. Very loyal, we are thankful for your support, your consistent support on the game plan show. Hi, I'm watching you live from Takradi Campus, TTU, and shout out to my friend Torture. That's from John AJ. John, thank you very much for joining. We hope you stay for the subsequent editions of the Game Plan Show. Remember, we've done 49 episodes now. Um, tomorrow will be the 50th, the big 50, and we hope we'll make it big for you as well. Now, let me read live comments, ones coming in right now as I am doing the show and see who I have to acknowledge as well. Still the Game Plan Show on Facebook, Paul's Ghana Spot, um, and we are also here um, getting some feedback from, from my device here. Um, we're also on Twitter, Paul Sports GH. Remember to follow us on Twitter. We're also on Instagram at Paul Sports GH. And of course on Facebook and Paul Sports Ghana. Now, Paul's Ghana Sport. Now, Vitalis, you are saying good to have you back, my man. Thank you very much, Vitalis. A chronic viewer <laughs> of the game plan show. Hazel Ment, you are saying nice show, Fifi. Okute from Elmina. Thank you, um, Hazel. Abdul Abdallah, you are saying I'm watching you live from Sharjah City. That's in the UAE. Thank you very much for joining us. Good move for Wakaso, you are saying. You believe it's a good move for him. Mubarak Hazard, they are saying, good luck, Wakaso, by Mubarak Hazard from Italy. A lot of Italy fans on the show tonight. Abdul Abdallah, you are saying, I'm watching you live from Sharjah. Um, keep it up, guys. Thank you very much. Ivan Snero Young, you are saying, we need him. I'm sure you are referring to Mubarak Wakaso, who is just signed for Deportivo Alaves. Now, Chris Abba, you are saying, we still need Wakaso in the Black Stars. Interesting comment there. Um, I'm sure many people will have, you know, dissenting views to that. Um, Richmond Apasu Wesley are saying, Hi, Fifi. Hope you're doing great. Richmond Wesley Apasu inside Senya Breku. Please say big ups to all my lovely friends. Bright, fair, Wale, Iconovich, Ice, Leo, Kiki. <laughs> and Maxwell inside White Sands Beach Resort and Spa. I hope they all heard them and I hope they are all watching the show as well. I love your show, man. Keep it up. That's from Chris Abba. Thank you. That's very kind. Of you, Chris. Nana Kweku, loyal Facebook friend and viewer. Thank you very much. You're always with us on the show, and I appreciate your support as well. Now, let's just move on to more issues, you know, that we have to discuss on this episode of the Game Plan Show. I have you on Commonwealth Games. Yes, the Commonwealth Games. The Youth Commonwealth Games. The Commonwealth Youth Games. A CYG. They will be happening in Nassau. That's in the Bahamas, which is where many people have their honeymoon. Many people, I mean, the people who have money, you know, people have some dollars to spend, some pounds as well. They, they go to Bahamas for their holidays. Now, the Ghanaians also don't go to Ebri and stuff. That's just by the way. Now, the Commonwealth Games will be happening in Bahamas and the Commonwealth Youth Games. And we have a Ghanaian contingent consisting of 12 athletes who will be making it for the tournament. Of course, the Commonwealth Games, this is the sixth edition. Yep, I believe sixth edition. It started in 2000. The Commonwealth Youth Games. Of course, it's between countries who belong to the Commonwealth. And so Ghana is in there, you know, all the countries who were formerly colonized by Britain. Those of you who need some insight into what the Commonwealth is. And we are playing the games um, this time in the Bahamas. Nine sport, 1,049 at least, 65 nations, and Ghana is one of them. And of course, out of the 1,049 at least, we have 12 Ghanaian at least. Let me just run you through. Um, the number of athletes which were confirmed by the chef de mission, Mauko Afajinu, um, over the weekend. Of course, four athletes traveled on Saturday, and we had eight more traveling on Sunday. Let me just run you through the list. Um, swimmers, for swimmers, they will be competing at the Betty Kelly Kenning National Swim Complex. And that will be in Nassau, Bahamas. We have Abeku Jackson, Abeku Jeche Jackson, who is probably the most talented swimmer Ghana has ever produced. And I'm saying it on authority because I've done a lot of research on this guy. He'll be representing Ghana with Kaya Forsen in swimming um, at the Commonwealth Youth Games. They'll be competing again at the Betty Kelly Kenning National Swim um, Complex. Abeku Jackson, we are hearing, will swim first on Thursday, sorry, on Friday. He'll be competing in the 100-meter butterfly event. We'll still be getting details on Kaya Forsen's event and we'll be updating on subsequent editions of the game plan show. Now for tennis, we have um, Imano Nyan Plange and Marian Ibrahim. They will be competing at the National Tennis Center. That will also be in the Bahamas, in Nassau, just around the same area. So for tennis, we have Imano Nyan Plange and Marian Ibrahim 
for the Ghana continent. Now, for the athletes, we have only just, you know, just one athlete competing. Interesting. Remember, the Common Youth Games is for athletes who are between the ages of 14 and 18. So we have a very, very short window, you know, with regards to just the teenagers are going to be competing. We have only one athlete who was fit enough to make it to the athletics event. That's a 400-meter runner, Rafia Tunuhu. He, she will be competing at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium, also in Nassau. So that's it, that's it sorry, for the athletes as well. Beach volley players who will be competing at the Queen Elizabeth Sports Center. Kelvin Katie Cabo and Eric Chachu, two athletes who will be competing for Ghana at the beach volley event at the Queen Elizabeth Sports Complex with a newly built facility specifically for the Commonwealth Youth Games as well. Now, for the cyclists, we have streets of, um, they'll be competing on the streets of New Providence, also in NASA. We have Solomon Tego and Gabriel Tete. Solomon Tego and Gabriel Tete, they will be competing in cycling on the streets of New Providence, also in Nassau, Bahamas. For boxers who will be competing at the Sir Kendall GL Isaacs Gymnasium, we have Alfred Corte and Philip Corte. <laughs> I mean, what do these two have in common? Of course, they are guys. They are probably from Bukum, and they'll be representing Ghana at um, the Commonwealth Youth Games as well. Now, there's no secret. Ghana's best boxers come from Bukum or come from, you know, Accra or the Ghana. The Ghana tribe as well. So they are doing Ghana, um, you know, proud um, with regards to their representation of the nation at the Commonwealth Games, which will be happening in the Bahamas. So to Alfred Corte and Philip Corte, Alfred Corte and Philip Corte, they are, they are amateur boxers who will be competing at the second or GL Isaacs Gymnasium at the Commonwealth New um, Youth Games as well, I should say, in the Bahamas. So all the best to these athletes. And for Judoka, also competing at the Sir Kendall GL Isaacs Gymnasium, the same gymnasium, we have Emmanuel Kemevo. Emmanuel Kemevo is the only athlete who will be competing in the judoka event, the judoku, sorry, judoku event as well. Now for the officials who will be accompanying the side to the Bahamas, of course, they've already flown to the Bahamas and so they left on Sunday as well. We have Noah Bagabase Bukari, who is the tennis coach. We have Kojo Abel Jackson, the father of Abeku um, Jetty Jackson, um, who is the swimming coach. She, um, sorry, he is the chief executive officer of the Dolphins Club, the GA Dolphins, which is the most dominant swimming club in Ghana as well. So Kojo Abeo Jackson, swimming coach. Moro Mumuni is the beach volleyball coach. Teofilos Eji is the technical personnel attached to the team. Vincent Akainete is the boxing coach, the amateur boxing, boxing coach. Dennis Kwekumo is the cycling coach. Um, Joyce Boate, I say you're, um, she's the athletics coach. Martin Engman is the team doctor. Um, Dr. Engman is also also on there. Benedict Ousu is a press attaché um, attached to the contingent. Uh, he'll be traveling, of course. He works for the multimedia group. And we also, they also have two guests joining the, the whole contingent, the 23-man contingent traveling to the Bahamas. Of course, already traveled. They left over the weekend. They are Richard Akko. Akpokavi, who is the Secretary General of the Ghana Olympic Committee, as well as Robert Safo Mensah, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Sport Authority, of course, recently um, appointed, <laughs> who replaced uh, Mr. Joe Kwenge. Um, Godfrey Akotoba, the former host of this show, talked a lot about Joe Kwenge and how, you know, there's a lot of inconsistencies with his administration. Now there's a new Chief Executive of the National Sports Authority, and he's Mr. Robert Safo Mensah, appointed by the incumbent NPP government as well. So like I was saying, the Commonwealth Youth Games happening in the Bahamas, Ghana is sending 12 athletes and 11 officials. Now in the whole history of the Commonwealth Youth Games, it started in 2000. We've had what, five editions already. This will be the set. This is the interesting fact about Ghana. We've won only one gold medal and one bronze medal, accounting for just two, a total of two medals out of what, six editions, um, sorry, five editions already. So we've not done too well. And we hope this current crop, of course, of Abeku Jetty Jackson, who competed at the Olympics in Rio. Kaya Forsen also competed at the Olympics in Rio last year. She was 14 by then. She's now 15. Abeku was 16 by then. He's now 17. So we hope all these athletes give us medals, of course, to the boxers, to the judokas, and all the athletes 
who traveled. We can only say all the best to you. The Commonwealth Youth Games will be happening from today. It, it kicked off today in the Bahamas, the Na um, Nassau, the capital, uh, sorry, the city in Bahamas with the games are happening. So today, all through to Sunday, the 23rd of July. So from today to Sunday, we have the Commonwealth Youth Games. So for those of you who are interested in other sports other than football, please make sure you follow the athletes and how they do. And we'll also be following them on the game plan show, bringing you daily updates on what Abeku Jeche Jackson is doing. Of course, recently broke his own personal best, you know, in 100 meter freestyle. And now he's going to be competing in the 100 meter butterfly event. So that's it for the Commonwealth Youth Games happening in the Bahamas. We have 12 Ghanaian athletes representing us and they will be raising high the flag of Ghana and we wish them all the best. Let's do some more comments on Facebook. Game plan show still with me, Fifi. And I seem to be going a bit fast today, <laughs> you know, just rattling things. Huh? Sorry about that. I need to calm down, you know, read your comments and see who is saying what on the show. We are still on 49th edition. Let's see who is talking. Um, still the usual suspects here. Um, CK Jr. You are saying, Fee, God bless you. I'm watching from Spain. Bas Barcelona, great. My former chairman, George Efrié, for me. Greet my former chairman. George Efrié for me. Of course, George Efrié. Mr. George Efrié is the vice president of the Ghana Football Association. Good evening to you, Mr. George Efrié from CK Jr. Now, Richmond, Apasu Wesley, you are saying you are watching live from Senya Breku. Fifi, you made me love football. Keep it up, bro. Thank you very much, Richmond. That's a very kind comment, and I appreciate it very much. Noah Ramsey, Aqua, you are saying I'm watching live from Dubai. You said Dubai, but it's, I, I guess it's Dubai. Um, keep it up, bro. Thank you very much. Um, the guy who was always watching from Abu Dhabi, you should come back on the show so that we talk about Abu Dhabi. <laughs> I'm still waiting for you. Please come on the show and let's see what's happening. Ketre, your FIFA, you're saying, see, today, there, you know, they talk about Dr. Jan because he's doing a good thing. You only talk about his negative side. GH Press, we've seen you watching live from Dortmund, Germany. Look, we have a reporter at the Jan unveiling um, of the Accra Cup pitch event. Of course, it's ongoing. I can't give you live pictures. Tomorrow, I promise you, I'll be bringing all the details from that event which is happening currently at the Accra Academy School premises. Of course, Asamajan is unveiling his $200,000 AstroTurf, which he imported all the way from Turkey for his alma mater. Remember, he was discovered playing for Accra Academy in the early 2000s when Joseph um, Kojei Sapon was a physical ed education instructor at the school. Um, so we are not only doing negative Jan news. Of course, if it's positive, we bring it to you. When he signed for Kayseri Sport, we brought you all the details and we told you about um, his, his time in Asia, all the goals that he scored, all the money that he earned. We've talked a lot about Jan in the positive light. So I don't know what you're talking about, KJ Yalfi. I, I don't think you've watched previous episodes of the Game Plan Show. We try to be as fair as we can on Asamoa Jan. So I beg to differ, KJ. Please come again. <laughs> And yeah, let, let me hear from you. Let, let's see what you have for me there. Now, Prince Taki, you're saying, big up Fifi with a night kick. Thank you very much. Um, Chris Abba, you're saying, Ministry of Sports should give full attention to other sports in Ghana, not only football. This can boost the young boys' morale in sports. I, I agree with you. I think we are concentrating too much on football. We need to, you know, spread our tentacles, you know, spread our pool with regards to the other sports as well. Now, Vitalis, you're saying, Good education on Commonwealth Games. I never knew countries who could partake in such games. And that this makes me love the game plan. One of the best shows in Ghana. You really deserve an award. Wow. It's a very, very kind comment out of the blue from Vitalis. Of course, Vitalis, thank you very much for you know, paying attention to the kind of work that goes into this show. Um, I'm very grateful for this comment. Now, Emma Kwaku, you're saying yes, yes. <laughs> I hear you, Emma. Say something and let's start the conversation. Prince Taki, you're saying all the best, Ghana. Um, Chris Abba, you're saying this is what we call a sports show, not countryman. Oh, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't read this comment. I'm sorry. Countryman Songo, you know, regardless of what he does, is a, you know, a respected senior colleague of mine. I, do, I don't want to come across as slighting him in any way. So, you know, you're saying it's a nice sports show. Let's just keep it at that. You love the game plan show. I also love you. We love each other. My production team loves you. End of story. <laughs> okay. So, Chris, Alba, thank you very much for your comment. I appreciate it. Um, Evans, Nero, Young, you're saying, if you do all big ups for your great work. Thank you very much. Um, Cosworth, Brown, you're saying, I'm enjoying you live from Frankfurt, Germany. Thank you. Keche, your FIFA, I did hear you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Keche. Uh, very, very 
you know, calm exchange that we had there. I'm sure you, you got everything that I said with regards to Asamoah We are doing our best to bring you all the angles on the game plan show. You know, there's a lot of research that goes into bringing you the show. So I appreciate your feedback, Ketri Yao. So shout out to you, Ketri Yao FIFA. And also Chris Abba, I'm the Abu Dhabi guy. Oh, Chris, <laughs> you are the Abu Dhabi guy. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it as well. I told you I'll be telling you about Abu Dhabi in subsequent editions of the show. Maybe tomorrow, when you do the 50th episode of the game plan, I will tell you my personal story from Abu Dhabi. As well. Watching live from Italy, congratulations to Jan for his good work done and same to you, Fifi. Thank you, Edu Emmanuel. Now let's move on to more issues on the game plan show. Let's talk Dobe Chacon. Big bout happening in Ghana for the WBO International Super Bantamweight title, which Dobe won last December by defeating Juan Evaristo, uh, Evaristo Aristo, he, who's an Argentine. In fact, he beat him in Auckland, New Zealand last December. Most of you remember, most of you are boxing fans remember this bout very well. So he won the WBO International Super Bantamweight title. And this year, in fact, this month, in fact, this weekend, <laughs> at the Bukong Boxing Arena, July 22nd, Saturday, 22-year-old um, um, Isaac Dobe will be coming up against Javier Nicolas Chispita Chacon. He's 36-year-old. Year, uh, he's a 36-year-old. He's coming to Ghana. In fact, he's landing in the country tonight. Um, we'll be bringing you updates from his campus. So all his corner men are coming to Ghana. His coach and his technical team are all landing in the country. Now, of course, the referee of the bout, Mr. Tony Weeks, who is from Las Vegas, Nevada, the mecca of boxing. Every boxer knows this. He's in the country, of course. He's currently in Ghana, and he's been talking to a lot of boxing stakeholders. We hear he'll be organizing a refresher course in ring officiating for Ghanaian boxing referees as well as Ghanaian boxing um, stakeholders as well of course mr tony wicks was recently in charge of the big rematch between andre ward and sergey kovalev andre ward of course the son of god and sergey kovalev the crusher and this fight happened a few months or weeks ago and it was a controversial fight but it was a big one a big big fight of course andre ward is an undefeated boxer in the light heavyweight division and mr tony wicks was in the middle of that bout as well. You also officiated the game between 25-year-old American Jesse Magdaleno, who is currently the world champion in the WBO um, you know, side of the Super Bantamweight. Well, he holds the Super Bantamweight belt for the WBO side. And he fought against Donito Donaire, who is a Filipino, last year to win that particular world title. And Mr. Tony Weeks was also in the middle of this fight. So he's accomplished so many bouts across his career. This is his first time in Ghana, and he's excited. I'll read you some of his comments that he made earlier. Um, yesterday, he was talking about how it's good to be back home. He says that this is our home, the place where the spirit of boxing can be found. Africa, especially Ghana, is a big place, and being here for the first time, I hope we all have a great time. It's great to be here in Ghana. It's my first time, but already I have the feeling that it will be a memorable time. I love the people and I feel so much at home. Now, refereeing in front of the passionate Ghanaian boxing fans will be a great honor. I can't wait for the, for the night to meet all these people to celebrate boxing, the sport that brings us together. This is from Mr. Tony Weeks, who will be turning 61 in, in August, um, accomplished boxing referee. He has been flown into Ghana for this bout. I don't remember the last time we had such a bout of international appeal, you know, especially at a new venue, which was built specifically for boxing, the Bukong Boxing Arena, involving Ghana's brightest young prospect in boxing at the moment, regarding what he's trying to do. Now, this bout is, you know, dubbed as the journey to Vegas. Now, what this means is that, um, Isaac Dobe is trying to get the world title, the WBO international, sorry, the WBO Super Bantamweight title by beating Jesse Magdaleno or getting a shot at beating him later this year. He says he wants to be world champion by the end of this year. And if he has to get there, he has to be able to beat um, um, Javier Nicolas Chispita Chacon on Saturday. So big, big fight for Ghana, big fight for young Isaac Dobe. Only 22 years of age, of course, is trained by his father, the athletic Paul Dobe. You should see him. You know, very interesting family there. And we, we have given them all the support we can on Saturday so they make Ghana proud in that one. Of course, also, sorry, another update from this fight is that Mr. Jack Daniele, who is the WBO supervisor for this particular bout, will be arriving in Ghana tomorrow. That's Wednesday night for the fight as well. So, 
July 22nd, Bokong Boxing Arena, 20 Ghana cities for popular stand. For those of you who want to go and watch, 300 Ghana cities for VIP. So, on fin to me, pay for the 20 and go just, just watch um, Isaac Dobe fight against um, Javier Nicolas Chacon. Now, the winner, of course, like I was saying, is likely to get a shot at fighting Jesse Magdaleno, the American who is currently the WBO Super Bantamweight title. Now, the record, Isaac Dobe has 16 fights, not a single loss and 10 KOs, solid record. The Javier Nicolas Jespita Chacon is 36. He has a record of 23 fights, 3 losses, and a single draw with 7 KOs as well. So that's what will be happening on Saturday at the Bukum Boxing Arena. More comments before we move on to our next topic here on the Game Plan Show. We are still live on our Facebook page, Pauls Ghana Sport with me, Fifi. And um, let's see what is happening on our Facebook before we move on to our next topic um still more comments coming in i appreciate them here on the game plan show uh, having challenges loading my facebook page let's just do um some more news um yes let's just move on to our next story which is that the black giant <laughs> Inter let me tell you a story so there's a there's a footballer in ghana right there's a footballer in ghana who says he's better than Daniel Amate and John Boy, who are, you know, all things being equal, Ghana's first choice um, footballers, right, in centre back. Um, yes. So, <laughs> this footballer is a Ghanaian footballer, like I said. I'm trying to build a story wall so I don't confuse myself. He's called John Bedu, sorry, Yao Bedu, Yao Bedu. Now, I'm sure most of you have not heard of him before because he's not that popular. I'm sure we'll have his image on your screens in there, but he's the captain of the Black Giant. The Black Giants, have you ever heard of them? I bet you haven't. They are the National Dwarf Team of Ghana. Yes, there's a National Dwarf Team. Um, and that's the official name. It's not me calling them Dwarfs. That is what um, they are called. The National Dwarf Team um, of Ghana. So Yao Bedu, a.k.a. Tola, is saying that he's a better defender than John Boy and Daniel Amate. And he's the captain of the Black, um, the black Giants, who are preparing, in fact for the seventh edition of the World Dwarf Games, which will be happening in Ontario, Canada. Interesting. I'm sure most of you didn't know about this. There was an organization that organizes games for, you know, for, for dwarfs all over the world. Now, we also have, you know, the Black Challenge, who represent the physically challenged national team of Ghana. And, of course, now the Black Giants, who are the national dwarfs team of Ghana. So, Yao, Yao Bedu is saying that he's a better footballer than John Boy and Dan, um, um, Daniel Amate, he was speaking, speaking sorry, to ZTV Sports and he said, I am far better than John Boy and Daniel Amate. This is no strange news because the players even know it themselves. We have met on several occasions of which they told me specifically that if I had a good height, I would have been the threat to the, their positions in the Black Stars team. So Yao Bedu, you know, is firing from all cylinders. He's saying if he had the height, you know, naturally, he would have been better than John Boy and Daniel Amati. Interesting comments coming in from him. Now, the team, the Black Giants, are currently in camp preparing for the seventh edition of the um, World um, Dwarf Champions, like I said earlier, um, you know, which will be happening from the 4th to the 12th of August 2017 in Ontario, Canada. That's what is happening for the Dwarf. Now, they've received some sponsorship from the Ministry of Youth and Sport, and so they'll be flying to Canada, hopefully. All other things being equal with some sponsorship to represent Ghana at the tournament. Now, Captain Yao Tola Bedu is telling us that um, he, he's asking for Ghanaians' prayers and support as they prepare for the tournament. They know they are going to go there and make Ghana proud. Ghana is a rich footballing nation. We are two-time world champions at under-17 level, one-time world champion at under-20 under 20 level, four-time African champions at senior level. You know, so we are... A rich footballing nation. And for the Black Challenge, the amputee team as well, at, at a point, we're ranked third in the whole world. You understand? So we are, you know, we have a reputation to protect in this country with regards to football. And the Black Giants, who, who are the national um, dwarfs team, are saying that they are going to Canada to make us proud in that tournament as well. So that's it for the Black Giants and what is happening in their camp. I'll be taking a quick breather and I'll come back to read your comments before we bounce out of the show.
Okay, so we are back on the game plan. I hope you enjoyed the last story that we did about the National Dwarf Soccer Team, the Black Giant. Now, you, you know, you, you recognize the irony in it. The, I, I really, really am in love with the name. I love, I love, I love, I love the name. With regards to the Black Challenge as well, who I wrote about a few years ago. So a, a team very dear to my heart as well. And I'll be following the Black Giants very closely. I'm sure you saw the clip of them performing on your screens as I was talking about them. Very talented side. And so Yaobedu is saying that he's better than John John. John Boy and Daniel Amate, you know, he's he's not he's not he's not talking on the basis of you know you know you know, you know bluffing or, or, or stuff like that. He's actually saying that he's a better footballer, and if he had had the height, he would have probably played for the Black Stars. We need to support every single national team. I mentioned that with regards to the men, we support the Black Starlets, the Black Satellites, the Black Meteors, the Black Stars for the women, Black Maidens, Black princess, Princesses, Black Queens. For the physically challenged black challenge and now for the dwarfs black giants as well we need to follow our teams and make sure that we uphold the high standards that we have in soccer in ghana now let's move on to some comments before i end the show on the game plan which is live on facebook paul's ghana sport as well godfrey that you i see you nana kweku as well let's see and um, chris about you are the abu dhabi guy i read that comment thank you very much edu imano you're watching live from italy congress to jan for the good work um, and same to you fifi barcelona also a baby you are watching live from italy big ups thank you very much eric menu name are you are watching live from dubai thank you very much chris abba okay fifi will be waiting thank you very much chris for this comment i'll be i'll be interacting with you in a bit prince baba yara rahman also a very loyal viewer of our show you're saying mr fifi good job watching you live from bologna in italy nana quick you're saying fee andre sog word is is from my okay andre son of god ward is from my adopted city in u.s oakland california he's a really cool guy i met him once very smart down to earth and a talented guy also so yes some insight on andre the son of god ward who recently for sergey the crasher kovalev um, in, a, in a you know super title bout a few weeks ago and we had tony weeks in the middle of that bout of course 20 weeks in ghana to officiate dobe against javier shakon as well now godfred are you cool i'll send you more details after the show thank you very much godfred i really appreciate your comment nana kweku fee please if you get a chance to interview yaobedu ask him how he plans on defending set pieces if given a chance to replace amate or john boy <laughs> oh that's me nana kweku <laughs> see he's saying he can play football he didn't say he's going to jump and head the ball you know he's saying he's a better footballer technically than Daniel Amate, who played at, who plays sorry at Leicester City in the English Premier League, and of course John Boy, who plays in Turkey as well. So Yao Tola Bedu is you know very serious. He's saying he's a very good footballer. I'm sure you saw his image, and of course of his teammates playing. They recently performed at the Ghana 60 Years Old celebrations at the Accra Sports Stadium as well. So I'm sure you had a few of that that's it for the game plan show thank you thank you thank you as always for joining us my name is fifi anaman we're streaming live on facebook pulse ghana sport we hope to come your way again and we'll end the show with a clip <laughs> you know on a weekend kwesi nyantechi got married to his longtime fiance mariam nyantechi who we are hearing is a registered fifa players agent who many people were speculating was a 19 year old but now we are hearing she's actually 25. now question and teacher obviously is a happy man second wife in the back car vice president fifa executive council member ghana fa president until 2019 and check out his dance moves as well goodbye and see you tomorrow <laughs>